Welcome to the Land, your best sports betting show. Two more semifinal games in the WNBA that I'm about to take you all through, including seven player projections for these props that we've got tonight. Let's get right into the first game of the night. Liberty post in those aces. Four and a half is the spread. You can get a minus four still hanging on FanDuel and the total at 164 and a half in this one after a pretty low scoring game, all things considered in game one. First player prop I'm looking at is Bree Stewart under one and a half threes. Need you to take this at minus 145 or better though. I wouldn't really be playing this if you don't have a book offering you better odds than minus 145 or so. That said, this is something we went to in game one. She took four threes. That was the projection. She made two of them. She got wicked hot in that game and it with 34 points. So we're not going to go and get scared just because it was a good read for game one and it didn't work out. We go right back to it. I still think that she needs needing to hit 50% of her threes is not something that Bree Stewart, who was around 30% on the season and historically is about that for her career, not something that I would expect her to be able to do consistently at all. In fact, she hadn't done that in nine of her 10 previous games versus the Aces and 11 of her 12 previous playoff games. She also had not hit two threes. She hadn't taken more than four, but one time in that frame, uh, that, that span of 11 or 12 games as well in the playoffs and versus the Aces. So it's not something that she's trying to do. I think that we'll continue to see her at four max in terms of the attempts. So I'm going to take under two on that all day. Another fade of a Liberty player and the points for John Quell need you to take that at 15 and a half. Now, 14 and a half is still an okay look, but 15 and a half is actually a pretty big deal here if you can get under that number for John Quell's points. I know it's hanging on a couple books right now as I'm recording this at about 10.30 a.m. on the West Coast out here, about 1.30 p.m. Uh, in the afternoon for those of you on the East Coast. So keep in mind, like 15 and a half is a very important number. 28 of 43 games that she went under. Uh, average 13.9 on the season. Uh, and even at 33 minutes, this is not a number that I that she should be able to get to. She should still be about a couple points under the 16 that she would need. You're playing with fire a little bit if you take under four, uh, 14 and a half. But if you can get minus 105 or better on that number, you're still in a, in a range where you have a slight edge. Quick reminder about the VIP Discord. If you do want to make sure you're not missing any of these plays and the write-ups and reasoning that I'm giving for all of them, at the same number that I'm playing them at as well as they move a little bit, obviously, a CLV has been in our favor today, especially. You want to go ahead and check out the description of the video. Link is in there. Got some 50% off for the first three month codes for you as well. So don't miss any of those plays if you want to tag along. Looking at Sabrina going over on her points. This is a play that is just based on numbers and minutes. Uh, and it's Sabrina Ionescu back into her, her normal form. She's playing 36 plus again in game three, or two rather, at game four of the playoffs for her. I don't care what anybody would say. There's no projection you could give me that would say she's not playing at least 36 minutes on Tuesday night. She played 38 minutes in both of the non-blowout games for New York in this postseason uh, and only played, I believe, 32 in the game against the Dream and was still actually a little bit off. Her Really, her coming back to, to life party was in game two against the Dream, and we all know how off, crazy off she went in that one, right? Now, if you look at the minutes for her, there's some insane hit rates uh, on the regular season. Season. Nine games where she played at least 34 minutes, uh, excuse me, uh, 21 games where she played at least 34 minutes in those 21 games over in 19 of 21, averaging 23 a game. The shots go up. She's at about 17 and a half shot attempts in those games as well. And on the season at about 16, same number for the playoffs. So we're getting more consistent Sabrina. And on the season, she averaged about 19. So I understand that the uh, Aces are trying to sell out to stop her. she and Bree Stewart. Obviously, didn't work as they combined for 54 points in game one. I would expect a lot more of the same, at least for Sabrina, who, as the pick and roll ball handler, is in a position where she's normally uh, pulling off the play that the Aces are the worst at defending. They are bottom three in the league in limiting pick and roll ball handlers and their points. That's Sabrina to a T. I expect her to be able to get into the lane and hit those threes to get at least 18 points in this one. Next game, Sun are back in Minnesota, taking on the Lynx. About a four and a half point spread there on most books. 153 total between these two insanely slow teams that only got to 143 in game one. First player prop I'm looking at is the under for Brianna Jones. I think we got to fade her. We've got a little bit of a similar situation to what we saw with the Fever in their first round series against the Sun, where basically Melissa Smith was not made for that series for a number of reasons, including her inability to D up against the Sun and their perimeter players. Bree Jones, much better than Alyssa Smith in a lot of ways, but this is still a, a series that probably is not made for her. We saw her play 18 minutes in game one and get outminuted by Veronica Burton, who should be doing more of the same here in game two. If Ty Harris comes back, it's she and Burton splitting a lot of those minutes as well. We could even see a few fewer 
minutes for Bree Jones than even the 18 she played in this last one. And the reasoning is simple. She is getting cooked on the pick and roll. Alana Smith is able to pull her from the basket as one of the more versatile centers in the league. Now, Bree should have a much bigger advantage down low on offense, and she did take a decent amount of shots. So I prefer the uh, under on the rebounds to the points in this one, but I think you can combine them both together and feel really good about it. Because if she's going to take about eight shots in 18 minutes like she's capable of, then that does make you a bit nervous about the points. Still don't think she's capable of getting beyond eight to 10 in this game for the points. So still like the under adding it to the total uh, points and rebounds combined if you can, but the rebounds are slightly safer. The, the other thing is, is the on, on the pick and roll, Alana Smith is either hitting that three or Courtney Williams is getting over and that's creating a lot of mismatch as well. As she's able to get into the lane and cause havoc from being in that position, especially with that free throw jumper that she has. So I just think Bree's going to be maxed out at 18 minutes once again. So I really like the under, even though they're slightly lower because the books are onto the same concept, still a really good look for Bree. Marina Mabry. I mean, look, things didn't go up enough for what they should for her averages uh, and her prop lines rather in game two of this series. Points and assists are both good. We went for the assists in game one. She did not get four. We needed her to get four. She got three. Now it's the same prop at three and a half, but we get plus money where it was just at about minus 110 for the assists in the last game. Absolutely, I'm happy to take that. Nothing's going to change in terms of her minutes or her usage. Even if and when Ty Harris comes back, if I should say if, she's still questionable for game two. Even if Ty Harris comes back, Marina Mabry's minutes are safe. She ain't going anywhere. She is clearly the second option as the best, uh, second best ball handler and orchestrator of the offense for this Sun Squad. Players like Dijanae Carrington, Dewana Bonner, they don't have the handles to help Alyssa Thomas facilitate the offense, take some pressure off of her because Marina Mabry can handle the ball and is a big offensive player that's really tough to steal the ball from, Not doesn't turn the ball over very often. So love the assists and the points. Look, she's up at, like I said, 30, at least 36. We're probably looking to 38 plus again for Marina Mabry as she's done in this the, the playoffs this this uh in the, the postseason so far in every game. She's averaging 19 field goal attempts in these three games, 20, 18, and 19 in this last game. She took 19 shots. I mean, come on, like it, there, there's nothing but volume coming from Mabry. Nothing should be changing here. If she's gonna be doing that stuff, we can't be leaving her at the averages that she had on the season, about 15 and a half points, 16 points. She's capable of getting the, the uh, 17 that her line is available at some places, 16 and a half. And definitely, even if you only have 17 and a half for Mabry, I still think that's worth a sprinkle. Although at that point, plus money for the assist is my preferred play. I wanted to briefly discuss uh, Dewana Bonner and Dijanae Carrington because I don't really trust them right now and the way that they're utilized in this series. Both of their minutes should be safe. I think we've got a really a strong seven to eight person rotation for the Sun now. Uh, that's going to include Odota and Burton come off the bench and then maybe Ty Harris if she's back. But Mabry ain't going anywhere. Bonner and Carrington for their defense and their rebounding ain't going anywhere because if you're going to play Bree Jones fewer minutes, you need both of these women on the floor to make sure that you have good rebounders at their position. I like Bonner on the rebounds, but I'm not taking either of these players in game two. But if you were going to go one one way, I prefer the rebounds for both of them. Because Bree Jones is not going to be in there for as long in this game, they're going to need rebounding from other positions. And these two ladies know that and should be capable of getting rebounds from their positions. So if you're going to go one way in, in an over with either of them, rebounds would be my preferred look. Closing it out with playoff AT, points, rebounds, and assists. Still in the same boat, y'all. Like these lines are going up, but I just think we need to make a change and recalibrate how we view Alyssa Thomas and her numbers when she's playing in the playoffs. Just that simple. Now she's going to be at 38 to probably the whole game worth of minutes in game two here. I don't think they want to mess around and have to go back to Connecticut for game three. The projection when 38 plus minutes is still 36 PRA for her. And this number requires that she gets about 33 is what's hanging at most books is 32 and a half PRA over. And that is still a good look. The points were losing value. I mean, that's up at 14 and a half. Now we've gone crazy, but she averages 17 and a half on 15 field goals in about 39 minutes in the playoffs since last season. That's up five, 50%. That's a 50% increase in her field goal attempts from 10 a game on the season to 15 a game in the playoffs. And I just think we have too much of a use case at this point to see how often she's done this. We have to buy into it. I think the, the rebounds and assists is better than just the points. Um, I, either one of them, honestly, is, is a better look to me than 14 and a half points, which is a lot for her. But it's still a number that she's hitting consistently in the playoffs. So I'm not worried about taking all three props, combining them into PRA.
And that is all the time I have for you in this one. Quick reminder, if you want a free trial to outlier.bet, jump in the description of the video. That's where you'll also get all these 50% off codes for the VIP and all the plays I'm getting. No gimmicks, no locks, just guaranteed over the, the long-term profit as we continue to really look for, for value and portion our unit sizes, bankroll management, all that good stuff. If any of that interests you, jump into the Discord. Also check out Outlier. Until I see y'all next, happy betting.